Well, hello there, friends, and happy Monday to you. Uh, so glad that you could be here and join us for our time in the Word, a daily walk, going through the Scriptures chapter by chapter, verse by verse. It's a great way to start out the week. It's really a great way to start out any day, starting with the Scriptures. And here, uh, we've been going through the Gospel of Mark, and we're in the 10th chapter. And today, we pick up in Mark chapter 10, verse 13. So if you have your Bible and you want to follow along, I encourage you. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. Let the little children come to me, he said, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God, and assuredly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Jesus is getting closer and closer to the cross. The disciples are aware, I believe, of the growing tension. And perhaps in this incident, they were trying to protect Jesus' schedule. I don't exactly know. But it wasn't uncommon for women in those days, for families, to have a rabbi bless their child, to bring the child to the teacher, and he would pray over them and, and bless them. And it was a very common thing. Um, even today, you think about in our church, we don't baptize infants here, and the reason is because, well, it's not biblical for one thing, but we do dedicate children to the Lord. So we have families in our church that will come up to the platform and will have their children there with us, and we pray over them and just dedicate their lives to the Lord, and the congregation really gets to intercede on behalf of this family and just commit this child's life to the Lord. It's something beautiful. It's something wonderful. Now, I will say, not all the kids want me to hold them. Some of them freak out. They're like, ah, you know, but the parents hold them, but then there's other ones that just snuggle. They want to, you know, they get to hold them and pray over them, and uh, and that's a real blessing. In fact, this uh, this last weekend, I got to dedicate my uh, second grandson uh, in front of our congregation, which was a huge blessing uh, for us and just so grateful to have that opportunity. But on this occasion, as all of these uh, moms were bringing the children to the Lord, the disciples suddenly tried to run crowd control and tried to stop them. In fact, it says here that they rebuke them. I mean, that's pretty serious. You're rebuking these moms strongly. But notice this, it says that when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. Here was an opportunity for ministry to these families, and these disciples are rebuking these parents from allowing Jesus to minister to their children. And, and again, the fact that it says that Jesus was displeased, it tells us a couple things. The disciples, they didn't quite understand at this moment what Jesus was about, what, what he was wanting to do, and, and they, mis, they misread the situation. They misrepresented him. And, and it bothered him. You know, I think it's really important that when it comes to ministry that we know what the heart of the Lord is. Um, you know, that we represent him rightly and that that is something that's extremely important to him. Jesus had, you know, he wasn't too busy for children. The other thing I, I love about this is that um, the children felt comfortable coming to Jesus. I think that's something that's important. For me as a, as a pastor in a congregation, I always love it when the kids will come up and, and just randomly come up and say, hi, Pastor John, or they'll come up and give me a hug. And, and it's just, I'm glad they feel like they can approach me and, and don't feel like they have to be fearful or, or anything like that. I think that's, that's a blessing. And, and there's something so wonderful about children. And Jesus often used them as an illustration. And he said to his disciples, hey, don't forbid them. Don't forbid them from coming to me. And then he adds, um, uh, because such is the kingdom of heaven. And then he said, if you don't receive the kingdom like one of these little children, you're not even going to enter it, which is really an interesting um, statement from Jesus. What did he mean by that? If you don't receive the kingdom as a little child. You know, you think about children that in their innocence and uh, they just, they believe. They, they have a faith. They have a trust that they believe what you say. Um, the other thing about children that is, is notable is they're very forgiving. 
They're very loving. And um, Jesus is saying there's certain characteristics that are found in children that need to be found in the children of God. There's a faith that, that trusts and believes. You know, when my children were growing up in our home, and we have four children, um, they weren't worried about whether they were gonna have food to eat because we provided for them. They weren't stressing, they weren't pacing back and forth. What are we gonna do? <laughs> they just were aware of the fact that we, we were gonna take care of them. And, and the Lord desires us to be that way too, that we wouldn't be fearful and wondering, is he gonna come through? He's gonna come through, you're a child of God, and, and he's gonna take care of you. And so there are, there are characteristics and as, attributes found in children that they, they have faith, they have trust, um, they are forgiving, they're humble for the most part, kids are humble, you know, these are the characteristics that wanna be found within us. And so it was after Jesus rebuked his disciples who had rebuked the women bringing their children that it says, I love this, he took them up in his arms, oh, isn't that wonderful? He took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. Oh, it's so wonderful to think about our good shepherd just taking us up in his arms, just caring for us, blessing us, he's good like that. Well, as he was going out on the road, one came running and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, it's important to make notice of this particular passage because the other gospels collectively tell us who this individual was. We come to find out that he was a young man, he was a wealthy man, and he also was a ruler. Thus, he's been come to, to be known as the rich young ruler. And this particular man, it says, came running to Jesus, which was uncharacteristic in those days to be running after him. I mean, men, men of stature and men who were, who were wealthy and were rulers, they didn't necessarily run. They had people run for them. But this guy was, it seems, sincere. He ran after Jesus, he pursued Jesus, and then he asked Jesus a really important question. And that was this, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? You know, you know, friends, this is the most important question that needs to be answered today. What do I need to do in order that I might have eternal life? Well, let me begin by saying there's nothing you could do. Jesus did it all. Our part is to believe in what Jesus has done. That's how we know that we have eternal life. We're gonna find out next time that this, this young man was wondering if there was some kind of good work that he could do in order to be saved. And Jesus is gonna make it clear that this man needed to believe and he needed to let go of the things that were holding him back in order that he might experience that abundant life that was only found in Jesus. Friend, I hope today that there's nothing holding you back from experiencing the abundant life that's found in Christ. May the Lord bless your Monday. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless. Mm -hmm.